Yo guys, driving in wet weather in F122 is extremely tricky. You'll find it much harder to slow the car down and trickier to manage your throttle under acceleration. You'll have to apply a new set of skills to truly master the wet in F122. But in this video, I'm going to run through some top tips for driving in the wet in F122. First one is to adapt your braking. If you're mid-race and the sky opens up and starts to rain, the very first thing you'll notice is that you need to start braking earlier into corners. In wet conditions in F122, you simply don't have the same levels of grip in the rain as you do in the dry. This is immediately apparent in the braking zones, and if you try to brake at the same point as you would in the dry, chances are you'll miss the corner apex completely, even if you are on wet tyres. Wet weather elongates the braking zone due to the reduced grip, and it will also make your car understeer more as you start to turn into a corner. Again, this understeer is caused by the lack of grip compared to grip levels on a dry track. The best way to adapt your braking to wet weather in F122 is to start braking earlier than you would normally. Braking earlier gives you longer to slow your car down, and this distance will change the wetter the conditions get. When it starts to rain lightly and you're on intermediate tyres, your stopping distance will be longer than in dry conditions, but not as long as in heavy wet conditions. You'll need to judge the conditions as they change, especially if the rain is getting heavier throughout a race or a session. The next thing you can adjust is your brake bias. This changes how much of the overall braking force gets sent to the front and how much gets sent to the rear. Typically in dry conditions, you'll have a brake bias setup of around 52% although many setups in F122 do use 50% at the moment. The further forward your brake bias is, indicated by how high the percentage is, the more of the braking force is sent to your front brakes. This can result in shorter stopping distances in a straight line, but also increases the chance of locking a front wheel. In wet conditions, the chance of locking a wheel increases as the grip is reduced. If you move your brake bias slightly rearward, closer to 50%, you'll decrease your chance of locking a front wheel. One other area of your setup to change if you get the chance before a wet session is your brake pressure. This changes how much pressure is applied to the brakes during braking. The higher it is, the more stopping power you'll have, but again you'll have a higher chance of locking a wheel the higher you set this. During wet conditions, to reduce the risk of locking a wheel you can lower your brake pressure. Lowering it will put less strain on your brakes under braking, although it will lead to slightly longer braking zones. Next up, you need to manage your acceleration and your throttle control. A similar approach to braking also applies to your acceleration in F122. Due to the lack of grip in wet weather, you're much more likely to spin your rear tyres under acceleration. You simply won't be able to apply the same amount of throttle power and maintain traction in the rain. During dry conditions, you'll get used to applying the throttle gradually out of corners to avoid wheel spin. But in wet conditions, your throttle application will need to be even more gradual still. You're much more likely to spin your rear wheels when accelerating, so limiting your throttle application will help mitigate the risk of wheels spinning. You can also try to utilize short shifting. This is the technique of changing up through the gears earlier than you normally would. Instead of revving your engine to its fullest before shifting, you shift earlier within the rev range. The lack of grip in wet conditions can make it possible to spin your wheels when accelerating even through third, fourth, and fifth gear. In normal dry conditions, you wouldn't experience wheel spin past around 2nd or 3rd gear normally. What short shifting does is help to limit the amount of revs when accelerating. Higher revs increase the risk of spinning your rear wheels, so reducing the point at which you shift can help limit potential wheel spin. Your on throttle differential is one of your best friends when racing in the wet in F122. You can change your on throttle diff setup at any point during any session, even mid-race, and it's done using your MFD. Essentially your on throttle diff controls the rate at which your rear wheels spin in relation to each other. The closer you set your on throttle diff to 100%, the closer your rear wheels spin to each other. At 100%, both rear wheels will spin at the same speed at all times. Setting a high value here can help your maximum traction potential as well as keeping your mid corner speed high during fast turns. It will help drive your car through a corner at greater speed. However, the higher you go with your on throttle diff, the easier it will be to spin your rear wheels under acceleration from low speed. Instead, a lower value closer to 50% will allow each rear wheel to spin independently at different speeds. This approach is good for reducing wheel spin at slower speeds. 
and it will help reduce your chance of wheel spin during wet conditions. During a race, if it starts to rain, you can start to lower your on throttle diff setting to help limit wheel spin as grip levels reduce. You can go as low as 50%, which I'd recommend doing for heavier rain. Curbs can be your best friend during dry conditions. You'll use them to shorten the route through a corner by driving over them often. However, when the weather starts to turn and it becomes wet in F122, the curbs become something you'll want to avoid. Curbs at most circuits are constructed using different materials than the same asphalt that is used for the track's surface, and the ridges within curbs can collect water. All of this means that curbs can be extremely slippery when the weather is wet. This also applies to painted lines around a circuit. The paint that is used for the white lines at the edge of every circuit doesn't have the same levels of grip as the asphalt itself. Positioning your car on the white lines and curbs in the rain can result in a sudden loss of grip, so ideally you should try to not drive over any curbs in the wet weather. Instead try to drive as close as you can to the curbs without actually touching them. The next tip is all about tyre choice. Your choice of tyre during wet conditions is one of the most important decisions you can make. Both intermediate and full wet tyres have grooves to help disperse water, where dry tyres are completely slick. This means that dry tyres can't disperse any water at all and instead will just simply drive on top of the water. This will result in aquaplaning and the loss of grip. Intermediate tyres have a few grooves and are designed to disperse small quantities of water. This makes them the perfect tyre for conditions where the rain is light. Full wet tyres have more grooves that are deeper compared to the intermediates. These are designed to disperse a lot more water and are used for conditions where the rain is heavy and there's a lot of water on track. It can be tricky to decide when to use intermediates and when to use full wets. But if a session starts with heavy rain conditions, you should look to opt to the full wet tyres straight away. However, when the weather changes and the rain either slows or starts to rain heavier if it started in dry conditions, you have to decide when to change tyres. You can use intermediate tyres if the rain is just light, after the rain has ended and the track has dried slightly but not quite enough for dry tyres, or if the track is slippery due to rain but not completely soaked. And you should look to use full wet tyres during heavy rain through consistent long periods of medium to heavy rain or if you're on intermediates and you can feel that you're losing grip. Knowing when to change tyres during a session where the weather is changing is an extremely important decision. If you stay on dry or intermediate tyres in conditions where it's raining too heavily for them, you'll lose a lot of lap time from having to drive slower to avoid losing control. The same is also true if you're on wet weather tyres and the rain starts to slow or stop. Wet weather tyres are fantastic for heavy rain conditions, but during light rain or dry conditions, they don't offer as much grip as dry or intermediate tyres can and they will overheat. If you can't cool your full wet tyres with enough on track water, they'll overheat and wear at a faster rate. A lot of knowing when to change tyres in F122 is confidence in your car and your ability to keep your car on the road during tricky conditions. There can be a lot of time to gain during a race from being on the right tyre at the right time. And if you're one of the first drivers to change onto a new compounded tyre, you could gain a lot of time. However, it has to be a calculated risk, as there's also a chance of spinning or losing a lot of time if you switch to a tyre too early, and the tyre isn't quite right for the track's current conditions. During wet conditions in F122, DRS is always disabled. So a good way of knowing when the best time to change from intermediate to dry tyres on a drying track is to pay attention to when DRS is re-enabled. You'll get a notification where DRS is enabled and it's almost always enabled before the track is completely dry. This is also applicable to the reverse. If DRS gets disabled because the track is deemed too wet, it's normally a good time to think about pitting and switching from dry to intermediate tyres. Also, another great way of knowing when the right time to change tyres is is to pay attention to your tyre temps. You can see your tyre temperatures in F122 in the MFD while driving. If you're on dry tyres than is required, you'll notice they'll start to cool down beyond the ideal operating window. And if you're on full wet tyres and the track is drying, you'll notice your tyres will start to overheat. These are generally good indicators that there either isn't enough water on the track for full wet for them to be the most optimal tyre, or if a track is too wet for dry tyres. And that rounds out our top tips for becoming faster in the rain in F122. These should help you focus on improving your consistency in the wet and gradually improving your speed and lap times. If you have found this video helpful, 
leave a like and let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you want to be notified when more F122 content drops, subscribe to our channel and hit that alert bell. But for now guys, I'll see you on track.